till end and we'll do whole of surah maryam let's start nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihi al karim amma ba'd fa'uz billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli rabbi zidni ilma amin surah al kahf a number 75 قال الم اقول لك انك لن تستطيع ما يسبر قال ان سالتك عن شيء ام بعدها فلا تساهبني قد بلغت من لدن عذرا قال الم اقول لك انك لن تستطيع ما يسبر he said did i not tell you that you can never bear with me patiently musa alislam said if i ask you about something after this Do not allow me your company you have now reached a point where you have a valid excuse to part with me from my own side so here in our number 75 the khazar said did i not tell you that with me you would never be able to be uh, patient you know have sabr so now musa al islam uh, did second mistake so he said okay qala in saaltu kan shayam badaha fala tusahibni Uh, musa said if i should ask you about anything after this then do not keep me as a companion you have obtained from me an excuse meaning then you can send me away if i ask you one more time then you can send me away because three chances are good right so three chances are good so here the hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said may allah have mercy on musa alaihi salam and had been patient we could have learned more because till here we know the whole story uh because he didn't have the sabr and story stopped here fan talaqa in ad number 77 so they set out until when they came to the people of a town they asked its people for food but they refused to offer them any hospital uh, hospitality here hospitality you know uh, somebody has to host that uh, time they don't have hotels or restaurants to live or to have the food and they found their in a wall about to collapse so uh, al khizar restored it musa said if you wish you could have taken for it payment you know after doing that you might have asked for the payment now he is making a suggestion over here he's not really asking any question you understand he's just giving a suggestion but there is an implied question you understand he said no more questions and he has to have complete sabr so this is like a implied question over here why would you do a favor to the people who did not even offer food to you and by the way you did a service to them so you could definitely charge them for it you know you did the service you might have asked the uh, you know food for it in a number 78 al khizr said this is parting between me and you i will inform you of the interpretation of that about which you could not have patience so what do we see about khizr over here that is he is satisfying the curiosity of musa al islam now we see over here that the action of khizr they kept musa al islam not only interested and alert but also very curious and that is the key to learning that when the student is curious then what happens they are eager to learn so over here whatever khizr did and the fact that he told him no questions allowed it kept musa al islam alert more interested more curious and whatever khizr did in this journey we see that apparently it didn't make much sense killing a boy building a wall of a people who refused to offer you any hospitality and making a hole in a ship mean all this happens illogical uh, nonsensical however as we learn in the following verses there was much hidden benefit to them and there are many things in the life that are like this we don't understand why they are happening they seem so illogical counterproductive but they happen they seem unfair they seem unjust but in the bigger picture they have a plus side to them 
as well. You know, for example, a person could be sick. They might feel like why this is happening to them. Why? But in the bigger picture, they realize that sickness was indeed better for them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about good because of that sickness. Allah caused families to come together. When one person is ill, isn't it so that one when one person is ill in the family, then what happened? Everybody is constantly calling each other how they are doing, they need anything, the family is close together. But what happens when the person is back at home, everything is fine. Then a week goes by and any and anybody call other, there is no contact or no communication. So we see that we are going through some hardship. It is diff difficult to accept it. Why? Because we don't understand why it's happening. There are many things in life that are like this. But as we will see that there is good in everything that Allah decrees and eventually we accept that what happened was indeed the best thing that could have ever happened. Right now we don't understand but after many years we understand after some time we understand so what we learn from this is that no matter what happens in life always be happy with the decree uh, decree of Allah just accept it Radhi to billahi rabbu Oh Allah, I accept you as my Lord. You are my God. You created me. You know what my struggles are. You know what I am facing and you will decide my affair. So if you have decreed this for me, I don't understand why. But if you decree that, I trust your decision. That's it. Samena Vatana. Just completely trust and be submissive to Allah. Now, Khazar explains why he did what he did till now. Even like everybody is curious, isn't it, to know what's going on. So, from Ayah number 79 onwards, as for a ship, it belonged to a poor person, poor people. And they were working at sea. So, I intended to cause defect in it. Who Khazar did it? As they were after them, a king who seized every good ship by force. So he made that error so that it won't be good, you know. So if their ship was perfectly fine without a hole, what would happen? The king would see the ship and he would take it by the force and these four people would be left with no ship at all. So there was a hikmah behind it for making a hole in the ship. So what is better having no ship or having a damaged ship? You tell. A damaged ship, okay. And here as for the boy... His parents were believers and we fear that he would overburden them by transgression and disbelief. So for Aradhana, so we intend that their Lord should substitute for them one better than him in purity and nearer to mercy. So these are the qualities of good child, of a good daughter, of a good son and what? That a good child is khayra minhu zakatu wa aqrabu rahma. A respectful and one who shows good akhlaq to his parents because the parents are more deserving of good akhlaq. And they are the most deserving of our love, our mercy, respect, obedient and likewise. They are almost deserving of salatul, salatul rahma. That we should maintain ties with them. That no matter what they do. We still stay connected with them. Isn't it? No matter what mistake they made. We will forgive them. And we show mercy to them. And ask Allah to show mercy uh, to them as well. Ibn Khab reported that Rasulullah said hadith. The boy whom Al-Khazar had killed would grow up to be a disbeliever. And had he lived he would have moved his parents to rebellion and unbelief so <coughs> so that is the reason he was killed so you see it's somebody's choice if they want to do be a disbeliever that's fine if they don't want to believe they want to have a different faith that's perfectly fine however when this was caused damage to the parents and caused them pain and hurt ibn bin qab said he would have moved his parents to rebellion and unbelief. 
so meaning he would make them disbelieve also then this was the problem now what do we see over here that uh, there are hidden benefits in every decree of allah azwajal in everything that goes against our wishes remember that there is benefit allah knows and we do not know but what we see in this verse is that child who is rebellious to his parents was he deserving of life what happened his life was taken away why so that he is not a source of hurt and annoyance for his righteous parents so what does uh, this teaches hurting parents is that something acceptable causing them pain is that okay no no way no causing them grief this is a sin and it has consequence in the life also so any time we see there some difficulty in our life and we cannot understand why it's happening what's the solution what's the uh, way forward is think back think how uh, was i to my parents did i ever do something to hurt them if i did apologize is there something i am doing that my parents do not like fix it pray for them also pray for the parents also because disobedience to parents hurting parents this is something that has terrible consequence in this life also it's a major sin please rectify this mistake if you are you know unreasonable to your parents please rectify it so here i number 82 onwards and as for the wall it belonged to two orphan boys in the city and there was beneath it a treasure for them and their father had been righteous so your lord intend that they reach maturity and extract their treasure so what do we see over here if the parents are righteous then children benefit in this life life also regardless of whether they are alive or not because these parents were dead their children were orphans remember we do not uh, protect our children who protect our children allah subhanahu wa taala and um, we don't protect our property who does allah does it so we have to make allah happy so that allah will take care of all our affairs all our affairs when we give allah his haq our ultimate love is allah subhanahu wa taala then what will happen he will take care of everything and this was a mercy from your rab rahmatam mir rabbika and we are always in need of allah's mercy whenever there is a problem ask ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis this is the thing you can say ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghis al khazar said i did not i did it not of my own accord he said i i did not do it of my own accord meaning this is not what what i wanted to but what i felt like doing no i was instructed to do this this is why i did it who said khazar said so this is the interpretation of that about which you could not have patience to whom he is saying to musa alislam and you see when the reality comes to light you wonder how foolish you have been for being angry previously for being impatient without having sabr so over here when you see this verses you look at the anger of musa al islam and the frustration how could you kill a boy how could you make a hole in the ship uh, you could have taken a payment musa al islam is so angry and he justified apparently but then in the bigger picture when you see why khizr did what he did then what happens you find yourself to be so foolish for being impatient for being angry so whenever something goes against your desire what uh, what do you have to do control your tongue over there be patient over there something apparently bad is happening but it has a good side to it what is the good side allah will bring it about uh, but wait and be patient have sabr and now 
the story proceeds uh, ayah number 83 yes aluna ka anil zil karnain and they ask you muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about zul karnain say i will recite to you about him a report who was zul karnain he was just and fair king indeed we established him upon the earth and we gave him to everything away meaning zul karnain had a very strong kingdom and he had the ability to travel far and wide very easily so he followed a way meaning he went on a journey until when he reached the setting of the sun he found it as if setting in a spring of a dark mud and he found near it a people meaning at sunset he reached a place where the sun was appearing to set in the dark muddy water and close to it where some people and these people uh, we said allah said o zulkarnain either you punish them or else adopt among them a way of goodness meaning you have the power if you want you can be good to them if you want you can punish them he said as for the one who wrongs we will punish them this is adal this is the justice of zulkarnain he chose justice allah gave him the freedom to choose whatever he wanted either be just or be oppressive what is the zulkarnain chooses justice then he will be returned to his lord and he will punish him with a terrible punishment the punishment of zulm in this life and in the next because what does zulkarnain says i will punish him here however this person will go to allah and there that is where he will find the real punishment you know this world is temporary so but a number 88 onwards but as for the one who believes and does righteousness so he righteousness he will have a reward of paradise and we will speak to him from our command with ease so here we see in a number 88 for the people who believe so wa amma man amana wa amilu salihan falahu al jaza al husna wa sanaqulu lahu min amrina yusra then he found a way he did not stop there he didn't say let him uh, retire let me have fun now no he went on another expedition so we learn so much from zulkarnain you know in a number 90 onwards until when he came to the rising of the sun he came to a place where the sun was rising he found it rising on people from whom we we had not met against it any shield there was no shield over there meaning these people were so poor they were so backward they had nothing to protect themselves from the light of the sun you see zulkarnain had a lot of resources he had lot of money lot of man power what we see is that he had he did not indulge in the treasures that allah gave him for his own pleasure no rather he used the resources that allah gave him he traveled far and wide why in order to benefit people so here we learn if you have resources use it, use those resources for the akhirah being in this world of course we are preparing for the akhira and this is so motivational you know i always whenever i go through again and again this sura get so much inspira- inspiration from zulkarnain isn't it kazalika thus and we had encompassed all that he had in knowledge whether he was in east or in west whatever zulkarnain was doing helping whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had encompassed him in knowledge so from this also we learn like you know wherever we are whether we are in US Canada whether we are in India Pakistan doesn't matter any part of the world we going to do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah don't need us but we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we should keep our mission goes on and on then he followed away he went on another expedition see he is not tired he is going on and on so we learn so much from him isn't it until when he reached a pass between two mountains he found beside them a people who could hardly understand his speech 
meaning he came across a people who were completely foreign completely foreign he couldn't understand them he couldn't uh, understand him so somehow they figure out how to communicate you know sometimes when you meet somebody and they are speaking different language and you want to communicate how you will communicate somehow you 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 will right with the hand gesture or the face gesture you communicate isn't it so they said o zulkarnain indeed yajuj and majuj are great corruptors in the land meaning over here rajuj and majuj live so may be a sign for you an expedition that you might make between us and them a barrier meaning please make some barrier between us and them uh, they are creating lot of fasad save us from the evil and we will pay you so zulkarnain said that in which my lord has established me is better then what you offer means i have so much you know lord has given me so much and this reminds me of uh, suleiman al islam that time also suleiman al islam when he uh, received the gift from uh, sheba uh, he said the same thing haza fin haza min fazli rabbi i have so much fazl from my rab allah has given me so much so the same thing here sulkanain said look he is not greedy over here he is not conquering lands or traveling going to different places for the purpose of oppressing people the reason why he is traveling everywhere is so that he can help people so what happens here so when they offer him money he says what i have already is enough it is good and this is the sign of a good leader he does not focus on receiving he focus on giving and he said but assist me with the strength meaning i need you to work with me i will make between you and them a dam so bring me sheet of iron now he is using the asbab means until when he had leveled them between the two mountain walls he said blow with the bellows this shows that this fire was not small because if pieces of iron are now going to be melted and these pieces of iron are between mountains that fire must be huge okay until when he had made it like fire he said bring me that i may pour over it like you know molten copper so that's what he was doing so you see iron and the molten copper there's a lot of fire lot of fuel being used what does it show the silkan and he didn't just have the money he didn't just have the resources the manpower but he also had the skills yes he had the skills he was strong in terms of faith he was morally upright and he was also strong in material sense so what happened uh, when this wall was built when this barrier was built so yajuj and majuj were unable to pass over it they were unable to pass over it and uh, now where they are able to affect in any penetration meaning he would make a hole in that wall in order to break it they couldn't go over it they couldn't uh, break through it so they were locked behind it now imagine what a great achievement so look how awesomely he did it subhanallah ay number 98 zulkarnain haza rahmatum mir rabbi he is saying this is mercy from my lord you know everything you do but only from mercy of allah don't think oh i did it you know no we are nothing only allah has a rahmat me rabbi what humility such a huge accomplishment this barrier which is uh, impenetrable and uh, unsuperable what is the commentary of zulkarnain that uh, this is the mercy from the lord uh, he couldn't do himself that's what he's saying he gives credit to allah subhanahu wa taala this is true servitude to allah no matter what we have done but remember that we couldn't do it without the help of allah no matter what we have accomplished we realize that it was only possible because allah enabled us and remember that allah's power is always greater and he said and when the promise of my lord will come he will make it level he will destroy this wall and when so this wall was uh, 
he will destroy this wall when allah want this wall will be destroyed meaning it's not permanent it's not here forever again look at the humility of zulkhanan he has done such a huge thing and what does he say oh it's not going to last forever when we do something what do we want it should last forever like that even if we have just clean up the kitchen what do we want he, it should stay clean forever right so nobody take a glass out of the kitchen cabinet unless you are going to wash it and put it away we get so upset with the people but look at the zulkan and how realistic he is and this is what happens uh, a person humble knowing that whatever i have done it's for the sake of allah and it's not forever isn't it so always uh, allahu akbar allah is great you know and ever is a promise of my lord true now when is it that this wall will be broken it is going to happen before the day of judgment uh, this barrier will break and yajuj and majuj will emerge this is a sign from the signs of day of judgment for everything is a time for this is also a fixed time there is a hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yajuj and majuj will make a hole in the wall daily they are doing daily and uh, when the hole becomes deep enough so they can see the rays of the sun meaning they make a hole they try to break break through it and when they have made it deep enough that they can almost see the other side uh, they have almost penetrated through it their leader say return now go back and come tomorrow you will be able to break the wall tomorrow so what happens you know when they come back the following day they find the wall stronger than before they did this work and they went back and when they come next day again that stronger the wall is more stronger now so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this will continue until they reach the end of their term when allah will intend to make them prevail over people they will make a hole in it through which they will see the rays of the sun and the leaders will say let us return if allah wills you will break the wall tomorrow this time they will say inshallah till now they didn't say when they say inshallah when they will come in the following day they will find the wall as they had left it and they will break the wall and run towards the people killing them they will drink all the water and people will lock themselves in their fortresses out of the fear of yajuj and majuj and yajuj and majuj will shoot arrows to the sky that will fall down blood stain and uh, they will think that uh, we have become dominant over the people of the earth and all to the dwellers of the sky and after this allah causes a beetle to infest their next and it will become the cause of death of all of them and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said by the one in whose hand is the soul of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the animals insects of the earth will become strong by eating their flesh and blood because there will be so many of them that the beast of the earth they will consume the bodies of yajuj and majuj so many of them and may allah protect us from this fitna ameen and ayah number 19 wa tarakna ba'duhum yawma izin yamuj fi ba'd and we will leave them that day surging over each other a scene of the day of judgment is mentioned here wa nufikha fi sur fa jama'nahum jam'a and then the horn will be blown and we will assemble them in one assembly when the trumpet will be blown the first time what will happen all those who who are on the earth will die and the trumpet will be blown the second time then all people will rise from their graves groups and groups of people huge crowds like of which do not exist like you know yamuju fil bad of surging over each other as if uh, waves وَأَرَدْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضًا and we will present the hell that day to the disbelievers on the display meaning on the day of judgment he will brought so that people will see it so this is how it's going to be this is very scary thing you know especially uh, the topic of jahannam 
those whose eyes had been uh, within a cover removed from my remembrance and they were not able to hear these are the people who did not listen to allah's word in this life so what will happen on the day of judgment they will be deaf and blind what is the only thing they will see hellfire may allah save us all and ayah number 102 then do those who disbelieve think that they can take my servants instead of me as alis in indeed we have prepared hell for the disbelievers as lodging So in ayah number one or two, "Afa hasibal lazina kafuru an yattaqizu ibadi min duni awliya inna aadna jahannam lil kafirina nuzula." So this is the so bad hospitality is jahannam, like setting up partners with Allah and only uh, He is the only Creator, He is the only Khaliq. This is the most unjust thing that a person could ever do, doing the shirk with Allah. because he has no partner the entire creation his creation the entire dominion his dominion and to say that anyone has share of that that is a great injustice zulman azim think about uh, as a people when we own some property for example as women we own some jewelry so what if somebody said oh you know what is this ring i also have share in that so yeah you can uh, wear it few days but i need to wear it the rest of the days would you accept it no way right my husband gave it to me and who are you and so blah 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 so we want uh, the thing what we own we don't want anyone to have it so how come allah made it he is khaliq malik and mudabbir and we are giving credit to any other person no way we can't do that I number 103 say o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam shall we inform you of the greatest loser as to their deeds would you like to know who will suffer the most who are the behind in terms of their efforts who are there qul hal nunabbiukum bil akhsarin amala they are those who effort is lost in the worldly life why because their efforts resolved around this world only dunya and only dunya they slept with the worries of this world they woke up with the concerns of this world and all the day they spent chasing the pursuing the matter of this world only while they were living their lives in this way they were thinking that they were doing well they thought that they were doing good stuff they didn't even think that they were doing something wrong and here we see in the following ayah those are the ones who disbelieve in the verses of their lord and they're meeting him so their deeds have become worthless and we will not assign to them on the day of resurrection any importance so here this because ulaika allazina kafaru bi ayati rabbihim wa liqai fa habitat amaluhum fala nuqimu lahum yawm alqiyamati wazna and here we see look at this are those who strive only for this world forgetting akhira what does allah say on the day of judgment will they have any reward no will they have any way of earning the pleasure of allah no way they will be the worth of uh, of their deeds nothing why what was their fault they reject allah's ayah why because the success of this world was more important to them they wanted to what they wanted to they didn't want to care about halal and haram the laws that allah has revealed the right and the wrong no for them what was their ultimate goal the pleasure the pursuit of happiness where in this world and for that they were willing to give up anything just think about just imagine reflect on the fact that there will be a time when we will be standing before our rab without any interpreter without any helper in the middle before as the fire and on the right and our left our deeds and full authority is with only allah if he wants he can forgive if he wants he can punish what we want at that time what would we desire at that time allah's forgiveness allah's pressure and so if we want it then we have to work for it right now we have to do those things because of which allah will forgive us we have to do those action because of which allah will be pleased with us there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on the day of resurrection a huge man will come 
and he will have no weight not even the weight of the wing of the mosquito in the sight of allah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then recited this ayah fala nuqimu lahum yawm al qiyamati wazna we will not assign to them on the day of resurrection any importance meaning their deeds will have no value in the sight of allah they they will have no value in the sight of allah and then who are the ultimate losers no matter what they did in this world it didn't make it to the akhirah and then we proceed i number 106 this is their recompense hell for what they denied because they took my sign and my messenger in ridicule and uh, indeed those who have believed and done righteous deeds you know uh, when ever talking about hell fire and now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says zalika jazaa'uhum jahannam bima kafaru and then in ayah number 107 ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا indeed those who have believed and done righteous deeds they will have the gardens of paradise and lodging خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها ولا where they will live forever and will not wish to move there and they are permanent resident of the jannah and allah may allah make us all among them i mean so here we learn in ayah number 108 they will never ever be before they will they will never ever be bored in that you know la yabquna an hawla have you ever experiences that you are doing something and you are enjoying it a lot and you don't want to end it especially children are like that when they uh, go somewhere like for example park you tell them it's time to go home they say no way uh, they are thirsty they need to go to the bathroom they are hungry they are tired their eyes are closing because they are sleepy but do they want to leave the park no because they they are enjoying so they don't want i'm just giving an example they don't want to leave the park but then what happens eventually they surrender they give up why because they cannot enjoy anymore they don't have the capacity to enjoy anymore because they are tired in jannah there is only pleasure pleasure pressure so much that la yabguna an hahibala they will not desire from it any transfer and what do people think how will people live in jannah forever won't they uh, get bored do you ever get bored when you are having fun you will never get bored so here in ayah number 109 see if they see where ink for writing the words of my lord and the sea would be exhausted before the words of my lord were exhausted like you know if the sea were ink for writing the words of allah the sea would be exhausted before the words of the uh, words of allah for uh, even if he brought like of it a, a supplement you know like praising allah so much like you know one sea is not enough another sea you know like it in another surah it says like of it seven also it's not enough praising allah is so much and in ayah number 110 say i am only a man like you to whom has been revealed that your god is one god so whoever would hope for the meeting with this lord here this is very beautifully described ayah number 110 qul innama ana bashru mislukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahu wahid فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعباده ربه احدا here surah ends the one who knows that one day he will stand before his rab he wants that meeting to go well then what does he have to do let him do righteous deeds do not associate any partner do not do any shirk two things uh, mentioned over here first of all fal yamal amalan salih not that he should do amal of just this word of fun or enjoyment so that uh, at the end of 40 years what day, what does he have nothing to take him to akhirah fa yamal amalan salihan if we want to make it to jannah if we want allah to be happy we have to work for it we have to strive for it we have to do something and secondly he should associate in worship of the lord not anyone not doing the shirk meaning any good deed 
that he does he should do it with sincerity with akhlaq only for allah to make him happy allah should be his ila mabud and he should do everything that he does for the sake of allah for his love out of his fear having hope of his reward and this is the end of suratul kahf alhamdulillah will uh, we end the suratul kahf here so here we end surah kahf and um, inshallah uh, we'll continue uh, with the suratul maryam here we'll continue uh, with the suratul maryam and here suratul maryam very beautiful surah and you will see uh, suratul maryam here uh, you know uh, the wordings will be hafiya shaqiya the endings will be that way and surah starts uh, with the huruf muqattad let's begin a'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim ka ha ya ain swad zikra rahmat rabbika abdahu zakariya iz nada rabbahu nidaan qafiya qala rabbi inni wahnal azmu minni washad washta ala ra'su shayba ra'su shayba wa lam akum biduaika rabbi shaqiya sukaha ya ain swadizar huruf muqattad and as i mentioned before also in uh, different uh, surahs huruf muqattad only allah knows the meaning of the huruf muqattad and we don't know the meaning of uh, huruf muqattad those are the disjoint letters and some people uh, they take out the meaning and they say this means that this mean that we f- we, we don't know we can't you know say it means uh, yeah um, uh, some some people they interpret uh, different things and uh, some people keep in their homes and other places saying uh, this uh, brings good or this brings bad allah alam but you know uh, this is the thing mentioned here so here we see mm, talking about uh, suratul maryam let's uh, continue here so here suratul maryam uh, will uh, see from ayah number 1 onwards ka ha ya ain swad the ayah number 2 is zikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakaria this is a mention of the mercy of your lord his servant zakaria zakaria al islam has been mentioned here and when he called to his lord uh, in a private supplication in heart quietly secretly he made dua why because the lord hears all voices hears out our heart even uh, when we do not utter the words or articulate our feelings allah understand he said my lord indeed my bones have become weak so here is na the rabbahu nida and khafiya secretly he is calling and he says qala rabbi inni wahnan azmu min ishtara ala ra'su shayba wa lam akum bi du'ai ka rabbi shaqiya look at the way of making dua this shows uh, like you know this show how we should make dua you know also in the time of need in the time of weakness pain hardship worry hurt grief and narrate your sad story before who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not before people because what are people going to do allah already knows what we are going through he is the one who decreed it but when you pour out your feelings before allah when you talk to him about what you are going through it lightens your heart and it invites the mercy of allah it invites his mercy he said and what my head has filled with white and never have i been in my supplication to you my lord unhappy look at how hopeful he is so always no matter how difficult the situation has become always always remain hopeful why because even like because every night is followed by the day yes so every problem has end to it so look at the words of it 
Zakaria al Islam that Walam Akum Biduaika Rabbi Shakia that I have never despaired. I have never thought that it's not possible. I have never given up on you, Allah. He is saying that Walam Akun Biduaka Rabbi Shakia. Shakia is you know despairing. He said, I am not despair with you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I haven't ever even gone that side. I trust you so much. I'm so confident in you. This is the thing we all should have. No matter what we are going through, doesn't matter. But we have to have complete, complete trust and faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, I fear the successor after me. The dua of Zakaria al-Islam was basically for the children. He want to have children. Why is that so? He want to have children. He said that I fear the successor after me, which means that he did not want children for himself. Rather, he want children for the spiritual instruction of his people because he was worried about his people that when I die, who is going to teach them? Who is going to lead them? Who is going to guide them? Who is going to inform them? He, he is not for like, you know, airing the, you know, what the property, who going to have. Not that thing. He want uh, the children for teaching them. And this tell us about the state of Bani Israel at that time. There, were, there was no one amongst them whom Zakaria al-Islam thought would be able to take this responsibility. Imagine there were so many Muslims of that time, but Zakaria al-Islam didn't think that anyone would actually take that responsibility seriously. So he wanted a child of his own home. He would teach and instruct and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would appoint him as a leader in order to guide people. And he said, and my wife has been barren, so give me from yourself an heir. What is he saying basically? I do not know how, but I need an heir. I need a child. I don't know how, but I need you to do this for me. He is asking, requesting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at how he is expressing his weakness. You can express your weakness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in front of people. His inability, but he was so much, trust so much faith in the power of Allah. When a, a person makes dua like this, then what happened? His dua will be accepted. And here in the following, I, a child who will inherit me and inherit, inherit from the family of Yaqub, meaning he was also be a prophet from the Bani Israel. Bajalhu Rabbi Radiya and make him my Lord pleasing to you. So Allah make him pleasing. You see this words, Waja'alhu Rabbi Radiya. You should make this wa for yourself also. Waja'alni Rabbi Radiya. That, oh my Lord, make me such that you are pleased with me. I become pleasing to you because the one uh, with whom Allah is happy, then that person is fine. So Zakaria al-Islam was told, oh Zakaria, indeed we have give you good tidings of a boy. Who will name will be whose name will be Yahya. We have not assigned this name to anyone before. So here we see Allah is giving good news. Not only good news, that is a good news of a boy, and also Allah gave the name Yahya. And meaning Yahya was a unique and beautiful name. And he said, Oh my Lord, how will I have a boy when my wife has been barren? I have reached extreme old age. He is in extreme old age. Now he is surprised himself and many times it happened that you made dua for something. You want something to happen. It's a wish and then when it is filled, you are like, how it's going to happen? You know, you are surprised. You are, you are yourself amazed that it actually happened. Like for example, you are talking to somebody about coffee at the masjid and after iftar and what happened? A friend of yours walks in with three coffees. You just had the desire, that wish and Allah subhanahu wa fulfilled it immediately. We experience such thing then what when it happens, we are shocked, we are surprised. Who told you? How did you find out? And then when we say, I wish I asked for something better, I wish we had the, thought about something better. So we See this uh, natural. So Zakaria al-Islam is surprised and that how can I have a child? 
and angel said thus it will be your lord says it is easy for me for i created uh, before you while you were nothing so allah is saying you you remember you were nothing and i created you so this allah's power whenever something is difficult seemingly impossible ask allah that ya allah i want to do this i don't know how i am going to do this you make me do it i'm i'm so weak i don't even know how to figure this out you help me figure it out you help me so and pray with conviction and with yaqeen please all your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believe me allah will answer it because zakaria alislam he placed his trust on allah and allah answered it and zakaria alislam said my lord make me for a sign he has complete conviction but you know he said your sign is that you will not speak to the people for three nights being sound even though you can speak but you won't be able to you're going to be mute for three days so he came out to his people from the prayer chamber and signal to them you know because he, now he can't speak so he's signaling to the people uh, to exalt allah in the morning and afternoon look at this you know now he is quiet he is mute but he is praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala morning and evening just imagine you are getting something and what you are asking for that to in the old age what you going to do you praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't it when he received the good news of a child what is he doing he busies himself in the remembrance of allah morning and evening he tells the people to do the same thing also and sabbihu bukratan wa ashiya what does this teach us that when we receive a blessing from allah then what we should do should we do as be also yes when morning and evening every time you feel happy and it happens when you have been waiting for somebody and it comes you feel happy about it so thank allah praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is none more superior in the sight of allah than a believer who is given a long life in islam and he spends it on in allah and tahleel takbir and tasbih so he spent his long life saying subhanallah ak subhanallah allah akbar la ilaha illa allah tahleel takbir and tasbih subhanallah allah akbar la ilaha illa allah okay meaning he does a lot of zikr do you know any person who is old or retired or not a productive as he used to be before because of their health condition because of their age do you know anybody share this hadith with them that when a person in old age also when he engages in zikr of allah what uh, his uh, status near allah he is like the best person in the sight of allah that a long life of 80 80 years 90 100 don't know in that time what was the person doing remembering allah glorifying allah because you see glorifying allah when you have to do the zikr in the morning and evening what does it mean it's a part of your life you are doing it all the time basically i mean there are some of the askar that you do before sunrise and then after sunrise all all day long you are trying to complete them and the next thing you know you have to say your evening askar which are to be said before sunset and then when sunset happens then you get busy with the night time askar so it's like round the clock you are remembering allah and for a believer remembering allah is not just limited for salah but it's part of his life throughout his life until the end of his life and ya yahya quzil kitab bi quwwatin wa atainahu hukman sabiya allah said oh yahya take the scripture with determination and we gave him judgment while yet a boy yahya was very wise by having decision power ill knowledge understanding the ability to establish correct opinion and he was like this from childhood this was entirely a gift or who from from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and wahanan min ladunna so here and affection from us and purity and uh, purity and he was fearing of allah wahanan min ladunna wazak wazaka tahum bakana taqiya it's from taqwa so here we see wa barra bi waladihi wa lam yakun jabbaran asiya a dutiful to his parents he was very obedient towards his parents and he was not a disobedient tyrant walam he he wasn't jabbar or asiya these are the qualities of a good child am i like those to my child uh, like you know to my parent just think about yourself are you, uh, your akhlaq is good or not first of all there is a wisdom and then soft hearted a uh, soft heartedness kindness affectionate purity and this purity is in akhlaq in character in tongue through thoughts then then talking about taqwa which means that a person will be good towards his parent that is what is mentioned wa barri wa bi waladi walidaihi to the pay to parents his good you see goodness towards parents has already been mentioned so many times in the quran which means that this is something that we do not have a choice about it so by the end of this what is the goal we should when we are doing this sura and what we are learning other suras too so we should learn from it being very good towards our parents walam yakun jabbarin asiya he was not disobedient tyrant he was not jabbar he was not hard hearted or rough or rude or bad akhlaq no not like okay and and peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he is raised alive and mention o prophet in the book the story of maryam when she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east and now the maryam al islam story starts from ayah number 16 this was when her mother decided to give her child for the service of allah subhanahu wa taala she intended before uh, child was born so what happened maryam al islam when she was born she was uh, taken to baitul muqaddas and that is where she stayed in the private quarter private chamber de- dedicating her time entirely for the sake of allah she was uh, meant to stay there and she took in seclusion from them a screen then when uh, we sent to her our angel and he represented himself to her as well proportionate man so allah sent the angel here by a man because this is how allah send angels to the people to commu- communicate with them we learn about the story of three people from bani israel whom allah tested and he sent angels to them in the form of people and ibrahim al islam lut al islam then angels came to them the guest how they were in the form of human beings so to maryam al islam also angel came in the form of human being but look at her reaction she has so much haya you know she said indeed i seek refuge in the most merciful from you so leave me if you should be fearing the allah because seeing the man she was so scared she has so much haya meaning go from here if you have any fear of allah you see she had never been in such close contact with a man that a man enters her room the only man that would come was who zakari al islam her relative and her teacher and seeing a man in front of her in her room was something that was frightening for her and as you can see here that she says i seek refuge in the most merciful from you leave me if you should be fearing of allah and you see maryam al islam even though her parents were not there her teacher was not there how was her reaction the reaction of a chaste modest responsible girl her statement is a testament to her chastity to her fear of allah subhanahu wa taala because it is this times when people are alone when a man and woman they are alone they, there's third is shaitan but here how is she behaving so sincerely so chaste so what is the reaction of maryam al islam i seek refuge in allah against you he said i am only the messenger of your lord meaning don't fear now angel is saying don't fear i am only an angel 
to give you the news of a pure boy. Just as Ibrahim al-Islam, when he saw the angel, he got scared. And Lut al-Islam said, I don't recognize you. He was also worried. He was apprehensive. And the angel said, don't worry, we are just messengers. So they said the, <coughs> say, said the same thing to Maryam al-Islam. So she said, how can I have a boy? While no man has touched me and I have not been uh, unchaste. So he said, thus it will be your Lord says, it is easy for me and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it's a mal matter already decreed. Meaning this is something that unavoidable. It's going to happen. But you have been told before. So you are prepared for it mentally. So she conceived him. She withdraw with him to a remote place. Who? Maryam al-Islam. She conceived him and while he was uh, in her womb, she wa uh, went to a place that was even more secluded. And eventually the pains of childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, oh, I wish I had died before this and was an oblivion forgotten. Why is she saying this? Because firstly, she was worried, distressed because uh, the pains of the childbirth, they are understandable, very hard to bear, isn't it? And so she is suffering from pain. So she is saying this and moreover, she was worried about facing people back back home that I'm supposed to be a chaste and a lone girl who lives in the temple worshipping Allah and now if I go back with the child how would I face the world immediately they are going to accuse me and they are going to raise a scandal against me how I'm going to defend myself how I'm going to establish my innocence she's so concerned about it it's a natural thing you know but he called her from below her and angel said, do not grieve. Your Lord has provided beneath you a stream and shake toward you the trunk of the palm tree. It will drop upon you ripe, fresh dates. See, she is there and she is getting the food also. So eat and drink and be content. Not only eating, drinking also. If you see from among you, Humanity, anyone say, indeed, I have vowed to the most merciful abstination. So I will not speak today to anyone, any man. So uh, she was instructed not to speak to anyone and she will be quiet. Meaning when people come and they ask you, they come and try to talk to you. There is no need to say anything. There is no need to say anything to anybody. And this is the best way of dealing with the false accusation. That when somebody is falsely accusing you, do not become defensive immediately. Calm down. Stay quiet because a person who is making noise is not in a state to listen to you. They are going to listen to you. They are just busy making noise. They are not even going to pay attention to what you are saying. If you try to speak, they will make more noise. So what's the best thing to do? Just be quiet over there. Adopt silence and wait for the time when Allah will create circumstances in your defense. There's a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man samata naja. Whoever is silent, he is from najat. He is saved. He is saved because imagine if she started arguing over here, fighting back. Do you think the people could become violent against her? Do you think that uh, was possibility? Very, very easily, unfortunately. This is something very common in people who are religious that as soon as they see somebody whom they think has committed a sin, immediately they will become violent. Instead of working towards Islam, they become angry and violent. So Mar Maryam al-Islam is told to be silent, just remain silent. And then she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, as she expected, oh Maryam, you have certainly done a thing un uh, precedented. What a big sin. Where did you get this child from? Notice they don't even ask her, is this your child? They immediately come to the conclusion. They didn't ask, is this your child or so on. Uh, she has committed zina and so on and so forth. They said, oh sister of Harun, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. So she pointed to him because she was fasting that uh, time you know fasting of being quiet 
okay imagine if we had to be keep a fast like uh, that no talking imagine so she pointed to the baby they said how can we speak to one who is in the cradle a child and that boy that boy he speak he said indeed i am the servant of allah who is saying that yes baby is saying that baby is saying he is the servant of allah he has given me the scripture and made me a prophet this was the miracle you know allah has given that power so that he can talk and he was made me blessed wherever i and i has enjoyed upon me prayer and zakat as long as i remain alive baby is speaking in the cradle and he is answering and made me beautiful to my mother and he has not made me a wretched tyrant and giving that thing also you know he is saying my i am very dutiful to my mother and peace on me the day i was born and the day i will die and the day i am raised alive you know the day he was born and he going to die and he will be raised again alive this is isa alislam the son of maryam alislam whenever isa alislam is address he is called ibn maryam the word of truth about which they are in dispute it's not befitting for allah to take a son exalted is he when he decrees an affair only he says kun fayakun and it will happen indeed allah is my lord your lord so worship him this is a straight path now these verses this entire incident teaches us two main lessons first of all we see maryam al islam was a pure woman she was chaste she was modest and allah subhanahu wa taala put her in a great test that she passed when we see that when she was put in a test she does not complain or get upset that oh allah why me or why like this how come i, I was not asked about it what if i don't want to no she accepted okay and once she accepted then what happened allah subhanahu wa taala also helped her you see we all are servants of allah and allah subhanahu wa taala uses his servants for the various purposes so remember when allah subhanahu wa taala imposes some test on us some difficulty on us don't begin to pity yourself because yes it is hard it is hard though but inshallah through us hopefully some good will come about you see many times it happens that a woman for example she goes through a divorce and she wonders why this happened to me and she is very upset about it she is mentally exhausted or emotionally drained she feels terrible about herself but when eventually she accepts that yes this becomes a source of strength for uh, her and for the others too so whenever something you are going through in your life accept it and the other thing we learn she was instructed not to speak and to be quiet and baby going to speak and baby spoke it in the cradle and that was the miracle from allah subhanahu wa taala and uh, remember like aisha radhiyallahu anha also she was falsely accused and what happened allah subhanahu wa taala revealed the ayat in the quran proof Uh, proving her innocence so leave the matter to allah he put you in that test he will make you go through it and he will take you out of it you will be fine inshallah but that moment of time you have to have the sabr and how the baby spoke and how the things happen but she has gone through a lot so we learn lot of lesson here and i number 37 then the factions differed concerning isa alis from among them so woe to those who disbelieve from the scene of a tremendous day how clearly they will hear and see the day they came to us but the wrong doers today are in clear error wa anzirhum yawm al hasara and warn them on the day of regret so what is the day the day of judgment why because the people will regret about their falling short in allah's right how they did not fulfill their duty to allah and here we need to think how do i pray when i am standing in qiyam where is my mind and by the time i uh, get to the ruku then where is my mind you know when you are doing uh, pray when you stand for the salah be connected with allah don't get involved in this or that you know 
completely. And when the matter will be concluded, especially people will express regret when the matter will be concluded, meaning when death will uh, approach. And yet they are in the state of heedlessness as they go about their lives without even remembering Allah. And they do not believe. There's a hadith. Prophet Sallallahu said, No people sit in a gathering without remembering Allah, except that it will be a cause of regret for them on the day of judgment. And no person walks on a path without remembering Allah, except that this will be a cause of regret for him on the day of judgment. And no person lies down on his bed without remembering Allah, except that it will be a cause of regret for him on the day of judgment. So anything if we want to be beneficial for us, what do we need to do? Remember Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while we engage in that act, that is why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encourage us to say Bismillah on receiving a blessing, Alhamdulillah, and all the time we are receiving blessings. And here in the on ayah number 40, we'll stop and we'll continue in the next uh, session, inshallah. Inna nahnu Indeed, it is he we who will inherit the earth and whoever is on it and to us they will be returned. So everybody has to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next clip, we will continue inshallah. Surah Al-Maryam from Ayah number 140. Let's continue. 